Hi everybody, my name is Dennis, and welcome back to another album review. Today we're reviewing Romanian singer-songwriter Alexander Stan's fourth studio record, Mommy. Now, before we can start reviewing it, there's some interesting facts to know about it. It was actually first released in Japan over two months ago, in Italy a little over one month ago, but it was just released here in America and across the world a little more than a week ago. And also, I was researching it, and the Japanese edition actually has three more songs, and they're all placed in a different order. But I will be only reviewing the eight-track album that was released here in America. So, with that out of the way, um, Alex Stan is a dance-pop artist, and this album is no different. But it also has some Latin influences in it that are very clear, especially from the start, with tracks like Rablaton and Mami. And these are both some of the strongest tracks on the album. Um, Rob Lesson definitely took some time to grow on me. To grow on me, though, um, I didn't really care for it the first time I heard it. it. Had very heavy, heavily distorted bass to it, and the beat to it was so almost aggressive and overwhelming that it didn't feel like it was suitable on a dance pop album. But the more I heard it, the more it really did grow on me. I began to really hear the nice groove and the funk behind it, and that heavily distorted bass actually proved the catalyst for this really fun sound, which makes it a really great track overall. And But Mommy, the title track on the album, was really the strongest by far track on the album, if you ask me. But And what makes this track so interesting is it has this nice, smooth, poppy sound to it, but it's still got enough like of a sexy flow and a pop to it that really makes it stand out as a great track on an album and a really great dance song in general. But another thing that makes it interesting is it has lyrics in three different languages. English, Spanish, and um, I believe it was French was the third language. Yeah, it was French. Um, but And these all work together really well. It doesn't feel awkward. The shift in languages between the lyrics doesn't feel like it's broken apart, but it's really, it's really smooth. It works together very nicely. And after that, we also have this track, um, used, You Used to Know. And this one, I can see a lot of people having a strong distaste for this song. It almost feels dubstep in a way, especially with the really hard bass drop for the hook. And the bass drop has a really high-pitched sound to it throughout, and I could see this growing irritating, but I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was done extremely well, and it's something that's easy to move to. It's not too noisy, it's not too frustrating to listen to, but it has just enough elements in it to make it a really fun listen. Now, it's not something I would listen to over and over again, but it's definitely a really good track. But after that, the album really starts to take a nosedive. We have tracks like Ooh La La, India, Wind It Up, and these tracks just all are so underwhelming. Especially songs like India, which the the hook on this track gives me some frightening flashbacks to AJR's The Click, and if you're not familiar with that album, it's bad. It's really bad. There's no other way to put it, but it's it's horrible. It's just horrible, a disgusting album. Um, It's like, just, oh, here's a crappy millennial trend. Here's a crappy millennial trend. But um, the hook on this just reminds me so much of that album, and uh, I don't know if that's um distorting my opinion of it in any way, but either way, I don't like it at all. I think the hook is awful. Um, The verse on India is all right. It's, it's passable. But it also features this guy, Kent Archie, and his verse just takes the song to such further lows. His verse is just horrible, and that goes for all the features on this album. Wind It Up has Janine Morel, I'm Thinking About You has Surak, and just there's not a feature on this album that sticks out in any way, and if it does anything, it brings a track down. Um, Going back to that song, Wind It Up, featuring Jen M- Morel, it honestly feels like a bad wannabe Pentatonix cover. It has that same kind of fun, lowest common denominator sound to it, and there's nothing wrong with Pentatonix, but it's just this song here is executed in such a poor, generic way. It wants to be all glitzy and glamorous, but it just doesn't do anything fun. It's not catchy. You can't move to it. It fails overall as any sort of a, a good pop track. 
And a lot of that can also be said about Thinking About You, which I feel like this would have been a hit song in the 80s if that has anything to say about it, but it just feels out of place in this album. It doesn't stand well as a single. It just goes right into the waves. You forget about it through this album. It's kind of just mashed in there. doesn't do anything interesting once again. But once again, we have a really strong closer with them round and round. Again, this goes back to more of an electronic feel, which I can see again, people not liking that, but it's actually done pretty effectively. It has a nice, catchy chorus, has a pretty well verse. The vocal performance on this song was actually really strong as well. I was really enjoying her vocals. And she has a good voice. She has a really good voice. And she definitely uses it to her advantage throughout the album. But, um,. I just wish some of the production values were a bit stronger, especially, like I said, on songs like India and Wind It Up, where they're just so forgettable. They don't do anything interesting. But, as always, this album was... It was it was listenable. It was listenable. I'm feeling a, about a 5 out of 10 on this album. Um, it's a dance pop record, so if you don't like that kind of genre, you're probably going to hate the record, but it was a... It was an alright dance pop record. Um, be sure to tell me how wrong my opinions are, as always, and I will see you in the next review.